Eventually they will get things out. But in the, uh, the first reading today, it mentions that there's a time for birth, a time for dying, and it's really a time for everything in between. So it mentions healing, building, tears, laughter, dancing, searching, etc. And uh, when you look at it as, as like uh, sort of a wisdom literature, the wisdom here is that we're being told that the, the, the way that you can measure a life is, is not so much by the number of years. You measure life by the experiences you have and the, uh, the way you handle those experience, experiences. Um, and really, we're being told that it's up to us to take advantage of whatever happens in our time. You know, that, um, Every experience you have, whether it's a good one or a bad one, whether it's happy or sad, whether it's easy or hard, whether you're alone with other people, every experience is an opportunity for us to take advantage of that and become a better person. And so if you look at a person's life, uh, you don't necessarily want to say, oh, that person lived to be 95, they lived a good life. Uh, but you just look at a person. And when you see a good person, you know they've had a good life. And it's certainly for Pat, that's the story of Pat's life too. Um, he accomplished a lot of things, but I think as far as Pat was concerned, his best accomplishment was being a father with uh, Jake and Drew. And certainly a lot of the paraphernalia up here is, is sort of testament to how much he enjoyed being a father and uh, and just enjoyed uh, life and things that happened in life. And, and so his family was so important to him. So that first reading just kind of gets us to focus on uh, like ourselves too, like how am I doing in my own life and how am I handling the experiences that God has given me? Do I take advantage of the time I have to become a better person. The gospel has a similar message. It's, uh, you know, there are many rooms in my father's house. After I've gone to prepare a place for you, I shall return to take you with me so that where I am, you may be too. And uh, it's just that sometimes we have to wait till the time is right. And certainly death is a mystery. For us, we'll never figure that out. But if you think about life as a mystery, too, like Pat was only 63 years old, and yet somehow the timing was right for him to move from this life to an eternal life. Right? And we can't figure that out. Um, there's a lot of things that, that just happen in life that we just don't, we can't explain them. There's, there's questions, we don't have answers for them. All we can do really is just to trust that somehow we can trust God, that, that God knows what's best for us and that God's going to take care of us. Even when we make mistakes, God is still there to sort of cover up for us, take care of us. And Pat's death is certainly a shock. It brings a, a sadness, a sense of loss. Um, and with things like this, basically, uh, it's your family and your faith to get you through this. It's finding out that you're not alone and that there's people there that you can count on. But also, you realize that there's people that are counting on you too. And uh, a funeral is really like, it's an act of love. And so you're here today because you love Pat. But also you're here because you love the boys, you love Pat's family. And we're all here because we love God and we know that God loves us. And when you have a sudden death like Pat's, there's other things you can mention too. And you wonder, why did that happen? Life throws a lot of things at us that we're not prepared for. Life throws things at us that are really too big for our human resources. But we know that God won't let us down. And that God will take care of us, and that we're not alone. That sometimes, when our own 
resources doesn't seem to be enough. God helps us and he lends us some of his resources. And uh, it's that love that, that we know we get from God and the love that we get from each other that shelters us when we're hurt. It shelters us when we feel that loss. It shelters us when we're sad. It shelters us when our hearts are broken. So, um, despite all the mystery of death and life, the one thing that isn't a mystery is the fact that the love conquers everything. And um, God comforts us. And that's why in that reading, Jesus says, there's many rooms in my Father's house. There's even a room for you. And after I've gone and prepared a place for you, I'm going to come and I'm going to take you so that you can be with me forever. So even passing through death, you're not alone. And it was the same for Pat. He wouldn't have passed through death alone. Like Jesus was there. The time was right. And Jesus would take him through death. And really what death does, the death sort of ends our, uh, the earthly phase of our life, but it enables us to enjoy being with God in heaven forever. And the second reading was a little bit about that. Eh? It says that Jesus not only died for us, he also rose for us. And so as believers, as Christians, we try to follow Jesus. And even though we're not perfect at it, God doesn't expect you to be perfect. God just expects you. You're going to try to be as good as you can be. And so as followers of Jesus, we do the best we can to follow him the way that we live. And then we know we'll follow him through death, we'll follow him into heaven. And that's probably the best image to think about Pat right now, is that, that Pat uh, wasn't perfect, but he certainly tried to be a good person. And he tried his best to, uh, to improve and to be better as the years went on. And so he tried to be a follower of Jesus, and that guarantees us then he followed Jesus through his life, through death, and now he's following Jesus into heaven. And basically, there's uh, there's three things we do at a funeral. The first one is you pray for the person who's died. And you know yourself that if this was the other way around, Pat would be praying with praise for you. So this is a time for you in a special way to pray for Pat. Pray that God will uh, reward him for his obvious goodness. But also pray that God will forgive them for any sin that they've committed. Second, at a funeral, you pray with gratitude. Because if you think of your life, the people that God puts in your life are gifts. And uh, Pat Cooper was a real gift from God. He had a very unique personality, had all kinds of gifts and talents, great sense of humor. Uh, just seemed to be a pretty good guy. And so hopefully uh, as we go through the funeral here, even maybe later today, you'll have a chance to sort of think of times when uh, you're with Pat. Like it might have been maybe just you and Pat and nobody else. And maybe you were telling him about something. Or maybe he was telling you a story. Or maybe you were with him and nothing was being said, it was just you were enjoying each other's company. Or maybe uh, you're with a whole bunch of people, but you and Pat really had a connection. Um, but they're precious memories, eh? Uh, and those precious memories are really uh, moments when the, the need to think about how uh, you and Pat connected, and about how Pat was a gift to you, a gift in your life, and how, uh, in a sense, Pat Cooper was a gift from God to you. And so with those memories, precious memories, this gives you a chance then to do the second thing, which is to, to pray with gratitude to God and to thank God for the fact that Pat was in your life. And then the third thing you do at a funeral is you pray for yourself. So the one thing that we all have in common is that from today, right now, this moment, until whenever it is we die, that's pre precious time. 
you know, for each of us, we have to make sure that we use that time in the right way. So for me and for you, the time we have, it's time for us to work on ourselves so we can be a better person. To work on ourselves so that we can have better faith and get closer to God. And to work on ourselves so that we'll be ready when our moment of death comes. So, uh, so that's the third thing. So as our uh, funeral continues, uh, certainly pray for Pat. Also pray with gratitude that Pat was in your life. And third, pray for yourself. We're going to have some prayers for the faithful now, so uh, I'll do a little bit of an introduction, and then Heather's going to come and do the prayers. And at the end of each prayer, please say, Lord, hear our prayer. My dear friends, God is the Father of mercy. Let us pray to him for Pat, who has died in Christ. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. In your goodness, forgive them their sins. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Remember their good works done in faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray also for those who mourn our brother Pat's death. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill the sadness of their hearts with the presence of your love. Increase their faith and strength in their love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also pray for ourselves in the pilgrimage to life. Strengthen us. And keep us faithful in your service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill our hearts with the hope of the heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayers. By raising your son Jesus from the dead, you've given us faith. Strengthen our hope that Patrick, our brother in your holy family, we will share in the resurrection, for Jesus is our Lord forever and ever. Please stand and we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us from evil. Amen. Please be seated. We have the uh, hymn now, the summons.
please stand. My friends, with faith in Jesus Christ, we reverently bring the remains of our brother Patrick to be buried in their human imperfection. Let us pray with confidence to God, who gives life to all things, that he will raise up Patrick to the perfection and the company of the saints. May God give Patrick a merciful judgment and forgive all his sins. May Christ, the Good Shepherd, lead Patrick safely home to be at peace with God our Father in heaven. And may Patrick be happy forever with all the saints in the presence of the eternal King. Before we pray, before we part, let us take leave of our brother Patrick. May this last farewell express our depth, the depth of our love for him. May it also ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. We know that one day we shall greet Pat with joy, where the love of Christ, which overcomes all things, will destroy even death itself. Let us pray. Lord, as we mourn the sudden death of our brother Patrick, comfort us with the great power of your love and strengthen us in our faith that Pat is with you forever and ever. Father, into your hands we commend Patrick, our brother. We are confident that with all who have died in Christ, Pat will be raised to life and live with Christ forever. We thank you for all the blessings you gave him during his earthly life. Lord, hear our prayers. Welcome Pat to paradise and help us to comfort one another with the assurances of our faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. My dear friends, may every mark of affection, may every gesture of friendship that you give to each other be a sign of God's love and be a sign of God's peace for you. May God bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. People of the Lord, let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. And during our final hymn, we'll start to get organized and uh, we'll eventually make our way to the cars. Okay.